Now, earlier this year, I got a chance to review one of my favorite two-in-one convertibles of 2022. Yes, I'm talking about the Lenovo Yoga 9i Gen 7. It's a 14-inch two-in-one convertible that pretty much checked all the boxes. I liked its new redesign. I loved its gorgeous display. It's got everything you'd want, 12th Gen Intel processor. But of course, not everybody wants a convertible. So I just took delivery and I've been putting through its paces the Lenovo Slim 9i14. Along those same lines, you get a lot of the same great features in a clamshell design. Of course, it has great speakers. It's got a really nice processor, the Core i7 1280p. That's got 14 cores, 28 watt CPU and it has a gorgeous 4K OLED display. It's not only gorgeous, but it is also a touch display that checks all the boxes. Let's see if this all comes together to make this one of the best 14 inch clamshells here in 2022. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Lenovo Slim 9i 14 inch laptop here for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, right now, Lenovo has one SKU and it comes in at $17,59.50. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And here's what you get with the Slim 9i. You get a Core i7 1280p. That's a 14 core processor. It's got integrated Iris Xe graphics, 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 5200 megahertz RAM. Storage is 512 gigabytes of PCIe Gen 4 storage. 14 inch display, it's an OLED display, 4K, 3840 by 2400, a 1080p full HD IR webcam, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.1, and the lid is covered in 3D glass. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. So right away, I can see we have a sleeve in here. Let's take that out first, we'll get to that. Always love those extra little things that they give you. Pretty interesting packaging here. Got to figure out how to get it out. <laughs> what is this? Okay. All right, let's cut this open. All right, a little enclosure here. They really didn't want this thing moving. Pretty strong plastic. Look at this. It's like the indestructible plastic. What's going I mean, this, look at this knife. This is really sharp. This is like the, oh, the most indestructible plastic I've ever seen. Forget about the knife, people. There we go. We got it in the box here. Let's uh, take a look at this really nice sleeve they give you. It's got a fabric on it. And we saw this sleeve again. Uh, it has a place for the pen. So I'm wondering if this also has pen support or is this the same sleeve we saw with the uh, convertible uh, 9i? So pretty interesting space for the pen, which I like. It has a little sleeve here with some documentation in it, full leather, and it's like a magnetic closure there. So that's pretty nice. Okay, that's nice. So right away, we're looking at the oatmeal. That's the color. Feels very premium. Got a little bit of substantial heft to it. Not heavy, but substantial. And that's the difference because you want it to feel like it's a premium product because you're paying a premium price, that's for sure. Let's see what they give you in the box here. So I like this right off the bat. So they're giving you a hub in the box, of course, to match the color. This is a white or off-white. So it's got a USB-A there, uh, HDMI, which I love to see. And even VGA, believe it or not. That's interesting. I thought we saw that last time. I think they might have included it as well uh, with the convertible. And then, of course, you get some documentation here. And it's talking about the Lenovo Slim 9i. Feels like there's something heavy in there. And that would be the power charger, which is pretty compact. 65 watts. See it there. USB-C. The extension cord right there. And that looks like it's about it. 
All right, let's get to the uh, star of the show here. And this is it. Okay. Get the plastic off. Oh, 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 is that gorgeous. Now, right off the bat, I can tell you I'm loving this oatmeal color, and I'm even loving the 3D glass cover on this. It gives it a really premium and high-end look. The only question I have is how well it would hold up over time. Will it get scratched? It feels like a smartphone glass cover. That's what it feels like. It feels pretty durable, and it does do a good job of not showing too much fingerprints. That's pretty good, and that has to do with the fact that it's the oatmeal color. And at 1.37 kilograms or 3.02 pounds, this is definitely portable for a 14-inch lap top there's no doubt about it certainly not the lightest 14 inch we've seen but portable nonetheless and for those of you wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. It has a reverse notch helping with opening that up. Now, it also is 180 degrees in terms of the hinge. The hinges are really stiff and sturdy, which is really good. Now, because it's not a convertible, you cannot use this in the yoga style as we saw with the Yoga 9i14. But again, with 180 degree angle, you can get the perfect viewing angle each and every time. Pretty nice for a clamshell. Now, when it comes to the keyboard, yes, I'm a big fan of it. These are the familiar smile-shaped keys we know from Lenovo's Yoga line. We saw with the Lenovo Yoga 9i. That's here as well. But very comfortable to type on. There's a good tactility, but the key travel a little bit shallow, but still good nonetheless. I had no issues. Now, there's a multi-stage backlight. Now, the backlight, in terms of the lighting, it lights up white against these silver or oatmeal keys, I should say and sometimes hard to differentiate or see the contrast, but it's still good nonetheless. I was able to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment in the limited time that I've used it in that type of environment, so good in that front. And it has a really nice glass precision touchpad that I thought was super responsive when it comes to two-finger scrolling, and all the gestures work as you'd expect. Good job on that front. All right, let's check out the port selection. On the left side, you get two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. Next to that is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. Moving over to the right side is the kill switch for the webcam. Next to that is another USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port that is also full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. And finally, your power button with an LED indicator light within it, letting you know the device is powered on. Notably missing, there's no SD card reader, there's no USB-A, and there's no HDMI, but they do give you that hub in the box that gives you the USB-A, the HDMI, and even a VGA port for those that need it. Unfortunately, there's no SD card reader of any sort here. And when it comes to the display, there's one option, and it's a good one, folks. We're looking at a 14-inch OLED display. It's a resolution of 3840 by 2400. Yes, that is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, and this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Now, it is a glossy display, so you will notice some glare and reflections depending on your lighting conditions, but it is a bright display. They claim 400 nits. I actually measured 444 nits, which is even better, higher than what they rate it as. So it's going to be good for both indoor and outdoor use, but again, Again, glossy display, direct sunlight, you might have some issues. Now, it's an HDR 500 display, watching high dynamic range content, and this is going to be great. Again, 16 to 10 aspect ratio, as I mentioned, Dolby Vision. And it also has the two of Rhineland certified display with a low blue light filter, helping reduces the chances of eye strain. That's always good. And it has all the hallmarks of an OLED display, the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, and the really high contrast. Everything you'd want with an OLED display is here. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a true black HDR 500 display. It's got Dolby Vision. It's excellent. Watching high dynamic range content and Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, and the like has been a pleasure on this panel. And it also is a very color accurate display with excellent coverage of the color gamut. So if you're a content creator, this is going to be great for Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, and of course, color grading. And it also has a touch layer. So navigating the OS through your fingers have been great with this. Now, it doesn't support pen. I thought it might, but it doesn't. I tried a number of different pens. If you want pen support, look at its sibling, the Yoga 9i14. That's a convertible laptop. I reviewed it earlier. I'll drop a link in the video description for those that want to check it out. So this is the front-facing camera, or the only camera, really, on this brand-new Lenovo Slim 9i, a 14-inch clamshell here in 2022 now this is a 1080p camera it's a ir camera that means you can log in with face recognition with windows hello and i actually think it's pretty good what do you think about the video quality 
What do you think about the audio? Let me know in the comments section below. There is a kill switch for the camera, so more security and privacy is there if you need it. There is no fingerprint scanner on this, so if you want to log in with Windows Hello, you'll have to use this IR camera. Again, I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. Okay, let's talk performance and very impressive numbers here from this Core i7, 1280p. It has 14 cores. That's eight efficiency cores and six performance cores. Those two extra cores that you get over the 1260p really help here in terms of these benchmark numbers. Really good multi-core and even single core performance here from this uh, laptop. Now, as far as the Cinebench R23, good sustained numbers here over the heavy workload test here. That shows that this doesn't really throttle that much, so it may maintaining good good clock speeds, good performance numbers here, even under a heavy sustained load. And doing everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, all worked well. You could even do some 1080p video editing and light 4K video editing, although the integrated Iris XE graphics, as I mentioned in previous videos, is getting a little bit long in the tooth. I would prefer something with a discrete GPU. Now, it has a pretty nice SSD, although they do advertise Gen 4 speeds, although these are showing Gen 3 speeds, but they're certainly fast enough for anything you throw at it. Now, the good news is this is user upgradable by the user. It's an M.2 PCIe slot here, so you can definitely upgrade it later on if your storage needs change. Now, when it comes to the RAM, this has got 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 5200 megahertz RAM. That's fast RAM. Now, unfortunately, it's soldered into the motherboard, so you as the user won't be able to upgrade it yourself. So make sure you get enough RAM for your needs when you're checking out. Now, it is also running in dual channel mode, and we're getting really good performance out of that RAM. Now, when it comes to games, you're gonna to have to rely on that integrated Iris XE graphics, which, like I said, are getting a little bit long in the tooth. It doesn't have a discrete GPU. So this is really not a gaming laptop. But of course, I've shown in other videos, even with the Core i7-1260p, with the two less cores, you can definitely game if you lower the settings on certain titles. Same thing applies here, maybe a little bit better with those two extra cores. I've done many videos with the Intel Iris XE graphics showing the frame rate, so I'm not gonna repeat it here. Now this sports a 75 watt hour battery and it did eight hours and 25 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. And considering this is an OLED display, I'm not surprised by the result. You're looking at about five to six hours of what I would call real world mixed usage. But of course, everybody's use case is a little bit different. So your mileage may vary. Having that OLED display certainly uses more power, of course, and you'll get reduced battery life. If it had an IPS display, you'd probably get a couple more hours with that. Now, I do recommend using a dark or black background with an OLED display. You'll get a little bit more battery life out of it if you do so. But if you do need to plug in the included 65 watt USB-C power adapter, it takes about an hour and a half for a full charge. That's pretty good. You can control the thermal profiles within the Lenovo Vantage app. And here I have it on extreme performance. But of course, you could put it on intelligent cooling and battery saving mode as well. And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will throttle under heavy load, it would reach a core temperature of around 82 degrees Celsius, and then it would drop down anywhere between 68 and 70 degrees Celsius, maintaining good clock speeds despite that, and having good results in that Cinebench R23, that heavy sustained workload, which would account for any thermal throttling. So good job in terms of the performance here and the thermal management. And when it comes to the surface temperatures, I thought they did a good job. It remained relatively cool, even under heavy load, with a couple of hot spots, one being above the keyboard, below the display, and on the underside, as you see here, but remained relatively cool, never too hot to the touch. So good job in that regard. Now, as far as fan noise is concerned, in that extreme performance mode, you will notice it under heavy load. It gets about 43 decibels, but nothing overly loud and nothing too distracting. Now, in the other modes, it remained relatively quiet. Now it has some really good audio on this. This sports quad speakers and there are Bowers and Wilcom speaker system employed here. The mids were good, the bass was good, and it gets pretty loud, filling up the room rather nicely. Now for the speaker test, let's give a listen to Epidemic Sound. And if you want to save 10% off Epidemic Sound, see the link in the description below.
Okay, people, let's bring it on home. What do you think about the Lenovo Slim 9i 14 here in 2022? And I got to say, this is an excellent clamshell. If you don't want that convertible version that we saw earlier this year, which I absolutely loved, this is a great choice in its own right. It's got a stunning 4K OLED display. It's a touch display that was super responsive. It's got all the hallmarks of the OLED display. It's all there. It's got 3D glass on the lid and a really nice aluminum design. It's sleek. It's modern. It's tough. It's got everything you want in it. It's going to really hold up over time. I have good confidence in that. Of course, time will tell. Excellent CPU performance out of that Core i7 1280p and it's 14 cores. Really nice Bowers and Wilkins quad speakers here that did really well in that sound test and it fills up the room rather nicely. Good job on that regard. Although it doesn't have the sound bar of the Yoga 9i that we looked at, this is a very good speaker system, no doubt. Spacious glass touchpad, super responsive, comfortable key board for typing extended periods of time, which is always good. They employ fast LP DDR5 5200 megahertz RAM. That is not user upgradable, of course. Excellent full HD IR camera. I thought the clarity was good. The picture was good. And it had crystal clear dual mics that sounded excellent. One of the best I've heard on a laptop. That's really good. Now, the negatives, of course, no USB-A, no HDMI, but they do include those in the hub with the addition of a VGA port, nonetheless. And there is no SD card reader. Battery life, as expected with an OLED display, is not stellar, and this can get expensive, although right now they're running a sale. You can pick this up for $17.59.50. Again, check the link for the latest pricing in the description below. Lenovo hit another home run here, once again, checking all the boxes. I'm going to give this a score of 90%, earning my editor's choice for 14-inch clamshell geared towards consumers here in 2022. Definitely making it worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the Slim 9i? Outside the United States, maybe yoga. I'm not sure. I'm totally confused. But the bottom line is this Slim 9i checks all the boxes. Again, if you don't want the two-in-one convertible that we looked at, this is one to take a look at. Now, this is the 3D glass is what they're calling it. It's almost like a smartphone glass. I would believe it's Gorilla Glass. So I think it's got some good durability, scratch resistance to it. And so far, in the limited time that I've had it, it's held up really well. It has a gorgeous, refined look. It's very high-end and very very classy. Now, I love the rounded edges. It's very comfortable to hold. They took that cue from the Yoga 9i and brought it to the slim line here. Really portable. It doesn't weigh a lot. It's really a uh, very nice feeling in the hands. And of course, you could just throw it in your bag and you're ready to rock and roll on the road. Now, the performance was really good out of that Core i7 1280p, 14 cores, as I mentioned, 28 watts, and the numbers showed it. Now, integrated Iris XE graphics are not as good as dedicated or the street graphics, but it's good nonetheless. Good enough for what you need this to use this for. Uh, as far as battery life, I think that might be the Achilles heel on this. Of course, an OLED display is not as power efficient as, say, an IPS display, and having the high-res 4K display doesn't help. So you're looking at over eight, I think eight hours and 25 minutes on my continuous web surfing test. That's over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. Uh, this is a five to six hour device, depending on what you're doing. Uh, again, everybody's use case is a little bit different, so your mileage may vary. But I think for an OLED, it's not terrible. But again, you'll do much better on an IPS display, that's for sure. But the OLED display is absolutely gorgeous, and you want that color accuracy. You want the coverage of the color gamut. It's all here. It's bright. It's sharp. It's everything you'd want. And it's a touch display. No pen support, but touch display that was super responsive. Now, there's no question this is a premium flagship device with a flagship price to match. And uh, when I first got this, it was over $2,000 over at Lenovo's website. But I checked this morning, it's already oh, about $1,750 or so on sale. And again, Lenovo runs a lot of sales. So make sure you hit that link in the description below for the latest pricing as Lenovo is constantly reducing prices. So you might want to keep your eye on that for a good deal on this. Certainly under $2,000 for this premium flagship. That's not too bad considering what you're getting. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment 
in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.